Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or it's 2 a.m. Go to bed already. This is Eagle Eyes on Tech. I am Eagle Falcon. And I don't want to start this podcast off like this, but I feel after a conversation I had with someone a few days ago, I have to. I ran into a very adamant Mac fanboy, and he was convinced, no matter what I said, that the MacBook Pro was hands down, quote, was, quote, hands down the best gaming laptop on the face of this planet, period. He has no earthly idea how wrong he is. And I'm going to use, hopefully not the entire podcast, but a good chunk of it, just to not only show how wrong he is, but just to show how Power, how much power you could pack into a laptop, both in the world of Mac and outside the world of Mac. So, let's start off by just pointing out where he gets his numbers from. His whole thing is from this little segment right here, saying gaming. And he pretty much just goes, look, it, it's 170% better. See, because this bar says so than the previous generation of MacBook Pros. I was not even prepared for an argument this mind-blowingly stupid. It's better than last generation's MacBook Pro by 70%, and this bar is really big, so it must be better. You can't see it right now, but I'm glaring at the screen. Good lord. Who even thinks like this? And now, granted, I know this guy that I dealt with is an anomaly. Hands down, a strange anomaly. So, let's proceed. First off, we want to get the biggest, baddest MacBook Pro we can. So we have 13 inches, which are absolute jokes, and we have 15 inches, which actually packs some power. And we're going to go with this one right here. The highest end one, which starts at tw- which starts at twenty five hundred dollars, and we're gonna soup this thing up to the absolute highest it can go. So two point eight quad core. We'll go one terabyte of flash. To- Actually, you know what? We'll we'll keep it at five twelve. We'll be fine at five twelve. All right, so that's it. Our budget is twenty seven hundred dollars. All right. In fact, let's just go ahead. And quickly add this. Add some outline to this. We'll have the color be white. MacBook Pro. It's a 2.8 gigahertz quad core. Fifth, fifth gen. Actually, how much RAM does this sucker have? I can't customize it here. So it has 16 gigs of RAM. 16 gigs of RAM. AMD M370X. And that's pretty much all we need. That's that's all the specs I'm going to care about. I'm not going to care about the storage at all. Because that's going to come down to the size of it. Or just talking raw, pure gaming performance. The hard drive is irrelevant in there. Now some people are going to say, Oh, but this one is a hard drive. This one is an SSD. Screw it. We're going to just... All of them are going to have 512 gigabytes uh, SSDs. Regardless. If we can't, then we're just going to have a different SSD. The storage is basically irrelevant. Because one way or another, you're going to get around whatever boundaries you have. Whether it be a bigger SSD or having a hard drive in it. So... And that one was $2,700. Okay. So I'm going to take that. And now you know that I actually do do this live. And do not edit this except for putting the three segments together. And we are going to put that in, what is it, Westminster? Yeah, that's the one. And I want that border thicker. There we go. Alright, there, 
that's our first one. So we'll take that off for now and we'll add that later. Now, how do I know that this is a fifth generation Core i7? Well, you had to do some research. On this page, this is their specs. This has all their details of all five of their models. And if you look where it says processor, it just says 2.5 gigahertz quad core Core i7 processor. Turbo up to whatever, nobody cares. Configurable to 2.8, which is the one that we picked. It does not say the generation. So you have to dig deeper. Now, you look down here, it says it's DDR3. That narrows it down a little, that means it's not 6th generation. You dig a little deeper, and bingo! We see that it has, that the integrated Intel card is an Intel Iris Graphics 6100. Intel graphic cards now are part of the CPU. So, by IDing this card, we can tell what generation it has, which I've already done. So we look it up, notebook check, graciously do, does this, the, the Intel Iris Graphics 6100 integrated Broadwell Graphics, and you see the model number there, it starts with a 5, it's 5th generation. So, that's that. So let's move on to iBuyPower. iBuyPower is a very interesting PC manufacturer. They basically do what any nerd can do, and build pretty much a showroom floor gaming computer. It has a window on the side, it's got lights, you can see they have case lighting all over the place, and their website is very not impressive. Better than your average one, but even I could whip up something like this in, God, an hour with basic tools. And with the help of something like, uh, like Big Commerce, you could easily ha have it purchased as well. So, that's what they got. So, what notebooks do they have? Well, unfortunately, nothing unique. We have Battalion. Let's see if that's their stuff. You got a pop-up? I don't care. So we look up the pop-up. We go to here. I want the biggest, baddest laptop they've got. Now one thing I notice right off the bat is these particular models, they are all Clevo laptops. Which, here's the thing. You could, in fact, note this one here, which is just the highest-end Clevo you can get without doing something ridiculously stupid. But I really don't want to deal with a Clevo laptop. On top of that, just no. Just don't do it, man. But, you know, we'll note this in anyway. We've got for $2,600, a Core i well, it's already a Core i5. Do you really want to note a Core i5? I mean, you're already weak on the on the CPU side, so let's we're just gonna skip this. I buy power is still a disappointment. It always has. In fact, fun fact: there are some I buy power PCs that are now available in Best Buy with their show window. Look in them. Take a look inside, and you will realize something. There is a metric ton of wasted space. I'm not even kidding you. It is hilarious. All right, so we move on. Razor! Oh, Razor. Well, this literally is a MacBook Pro clone. So let's see what we got. We got the, the new Razor Blade, Razor Blade Pro. So, as you can tell, it's very MacBook Pro-esque, but instead, on the side where you ha normally have a numerical pad, you have your trackpad with an LCD screen in it. And that's cute. You've got some customized hotkeys that you can, that there's a LCD under each key that customize based on whatever you make the macro to. That's, again, cute. Dual storage, you have an SSD and a hard drive. You know, very useful. You've got a dual cooling system. Already better than the Apple system, but not by much. Though it is going to be louder than the Apple system. That's the thing to keep in mind. You got space to work. It is a 17-inch, so it is bigger than the than the MacBook Pro. But we're not talking about the size of the laptop. We're talking about the raw power. 
That's what this guy's main focus was. So, you know, that's all that. Let's get down to the specs. We've got an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 960. We've got a fourth generation Core i7. Uh, so we might lose there, processor-wise. 16 gigs of RAM, I think we match there. And we can get up to a 256 hard drive. What was the one I picked here? Oh, right, I didn't care. So, what's the cost of this? It is $24.99. So, we'll just note that in. Two point six gigahertz quad core, sixteen gigabytes of RAM, NVIDIA GTX nine sixty M. Now the CPU doesn't matter as much, except in the case of the mobile world. That can actually make a bit of a difference. So five hundred dollars left. Just less you get less CPU which can be a factor but you get more GPU how do I know you get more GPU well let's quickly do a gross comparison so we got the GTX 960 M versus specifically the R9 M7 R9 M 370 X for the Mac compare the two and it wins by almost a full point. <laughs> Just flat out. Actually, the graphs actually make it look a little, quite a bit closer. The GPU boss score, it's only 0.8 of a difference. It's still noticeable, but not by much. So I'd say you end up about even. You do get that gimmicky trackpad, but nobody cares. Alright, so let's move on. Main gear. Main Gear is a fascinating little company in the fact that they do what any nerd like me can do at home, except they do it better. So let's see what we got here. Let's do a buy now of the of this guy. Now we want to get as close to 2700 as possible. So we'll go buy now. And I don't care about any of those special promotions. Chassis is fine. That's it. I don't care about the exterior finish. Although, actually, can I get as close to silver as possible? Epic red. Epic silver. Here we go. All right. And that's actually the best I can do. Rip. But that's fine. Because the power gets exactly the same here. Because we got a we got a quad core, core i7. We've got 16 gigs of RAM, and we got a 980, which is just going to wreck the 370. Let's see by how much real quick. M, M370X. M 980M. Compare the two, and it's not even close. Rip. All right, so that's on main gear. Nomad 17. That's a 2.7 gigahertz. So you're 100 megahertz short of what the, um, the MacBook Pro has, but you're a newer generation. In fact, actually, on the razor blade, I forgot to mention the generation. Let's quickly do that. I want to be fair. All flaws must be noticed. Quad core, sixth gen, 16 gigabytes of RAM. NVIDIA GTX. 980M and that is at 
2,700, and I'll round up to 50. All right. So we can look at one more before we gotta before we gotta take a break. So next, Falcon Northwest. Let me tell you, it's been a while since I've looked at Falcon Northwest, but holy smokes, this website! I wish I could make websites like this. This is a this is insane. Some guy definitely knows their HTML5 when they did this. this. I mean, Falcon Northwest is a very small company that does custom PCs. Except they've also got their own paint shop. They do their own designs. It's very, very beautiful site and very beautiful computers. But that's for another day. Let's take just, just take a look at their laptop. Now, if I remember right, the let's just view all laptops. Because one of them's a quote-unquote thin and light but it's not, yeah. There's there's their thin and light, and Alienware's laptops are thinner and lighter than that. That is enormous. It's almost as thick as their, quote, desktop replacement. In fact, how big is that? Yeah, 5.7 pounds? That's not thin and light. That's, no. <laughs> not even close to a thin and light. Alright, so let's look at their DRX. And let's just go straight to configure. Do I have to launch a configurator? Oh god, what happened? <laughs> okay. So I want to try and keep this as simple as possible. Alright, processor. What, are they overclocking this processor? Okay, hold up. Something's not right here. Something doesn't smell right. How is this... What are they doing? I mean, is this a full desktop processor? Yeah! What?! What?! Okay, then. Yeah. It's an L... Okay, so this thing... This sucker can hold a full desktop processor in it. Because holy smokes. I don't think we're able to top that later on. Alright, so... Minimum I can put in is only 32 gigs of RAM. Already an overkill. I guess we're gonna have to settle for a GTX 970. Oh, darn. And, yeah, I guess we're just gonna have to keep it as it is. Holy shit. <laughs> Alright, so. Falcon Northwest. Falcon Northwest definitely takes it out of all the ones I picked as far as the CPU side. Unfortunately, for the Falcon here, the CPU doesn't matter nearly as much as the GPU does. God, I gotta go back to that processor to make sure I got the specs exactly right. Which is a 3.6 gigahertz quad core. That's a 6th generation. Damn. Just damn. You can put a 4.2 gigahertz... God, I don't know how it doesn't catch fire with that. I didn't realize when I was picking this out that the sucker took desktop processors. I need a minute to process that. So, 32 gigabytes of RAM. NVIDIA GTX 970M. And that's at... 2780. I'll round up again. So that's that. 
All right. Now, granted, all of these are not going to have battery life. And battery life's not what I care about. The core thing was the, po the power. To be basically a portable desktop for when you're at a hotel or at a convention or anything like that. That's the sole purpose of these laptops. It's the sole thing. All right, I want to go back to the graphic cards. Can I get something crazier? No, I can't. No SLIing in here, which is kind of a hilarious shame. Dang. All right, we'll be right back, guys, and then we'll just continue on here. Oh, actually, before we do, here's where we stand right now. There we are. We'll be right back. <laughs> Like that. Keep it going for a bit. Where'd you find this? I'll have to play that sometime. Alright, let's fade that out. Fade that out. I'll get too distracted otherwise. Welcome back, Eagle Eyes on Tech. I am Eagle Falcon. Alright, so. This is where we left off with currently Falcon Northwest in the lead. Basically on processor alone and having double the RAM, but the RAM the RAM is irrelevant. You got more than 8 gigs, you're ready for the world. But really, as far as performance per dollar, definitely the Falcon wins, especially if this is going to be a makeshift um, portable workstation. So let's get that out of the way. Let's move on to some of the more mainstream brands. Move on to Asus. First off, HP, Acer, and Lenovo. None of their laptops even come close to holding a candle to these other laptops. So, here we've got, and I didn't scroll up all the way, we have the ROG G752. This is their latest in the Republic of Gamers gaming laptop. And they hype the ever-loving cow out of it. And for good reason. Look at this thing. That is a pleasant palm rest to look at. Isn't it? I mean, just look at that. I would not mind staring at that. I mean, it definitely has more character than the MacBook. But then again, the MacBook's just the usual island-style keys on a on aluminum everything. I mean, it has its own class, but... You know, you really just gotta pizzazz it up sometimes. And that's one thing Apple never does. They want to try and keep it simple, elegant, and beautiful. Come on, guys. You can do better than that. And that's part of the problem with design in laptops nowadays, because everyone thinks you can get away with simple and elegant, because Apple gets away with simple and elegant. And ugh. Oh, moving on. So I've got a few little tricks up its sleeve. You know, you've got your standard mobile Skylake processor in it. You've got your GTX in it. You've got basically a fairly standard cooling system in there. Massive heat sinks, giant squirrel cage fans. You know, pretty normal. This sucker, however, uses what's called dust release thermal tunnel. Supposedly, and I put the word supposedly in massive air quotes because I have a hard time believing this because every other solution that says we can get rid of dust efficiently never works. It kind of does, but never works to the degree they're saying. Supposedly, any dust that gets caught in will get sucked into, and the thing just dropped on me, will get sucked into a dust release tunnel and shot out the back. Which really just tells me, seeing as how the back is just one giant, you know, fin layout, how long is going to be until the dust gets clogged up in there and then the dust tunnel is useless. But you can kind of see it right here. 
The rest of this is, is Finn heat sink, and then there's this dust tunnel here. That's supposedly where all the dust goes. I have a hard time believing it. Especially since the fan doesn't look like it connects to it. Regardless. I'm skeptical about that, but there's no way I can prove it <laughs> true or not. So the keyboard does light up. All these other ones do light up as well that I've shown up, but they only light up, light up in certain colors. The Razer one only lights up in green. Main Gears is only... I think their, theirs was just blue. Falcon Northwest didn't say anything, which tells me that it's just... If it lights up, it's not by much. Let me just actually quickly take a look at the keyboard. Does it say anything? It just says Illuminated Keyboard. Of three different keyboard selections. So yeah, there's nothing really. Oh, it actually is... Choose from seven, seven, seven instant effects to customize your own keyboard co color combinations in three different keyboard selections. Alright, so there's more there. Probably closer to what, uh, what Alienware does. But you know, here you can have certain keys highlight if you're in an FPS. You can have your WASD and then 1234 light up. Same with MOBAs, you can have different keys light up. Same thing in RT RTSs. I don't know if you can just configure this infinitely or only in these three combinations. If it's only in these three combinations, that kind of makes it less useful. But it's also varying degrees of useful when, you know, only a complete scrub needs the keys they they normally use highlighted. I mean, I suck at games, and even I don't need that. You idiots. Upgrade up to 64 gigs of RAM, nobody cares. <laughs> Let's just be blunt. 8 gigs is all you need right now, 16 is overkill. Unless you're doing something silly. And if you're doing something silly, you don't need me to tell you how much RAM you need. And I think that's pretty much it. It comes with, it comes with a lifetime of XSplit Gamecast. Meh? I mean, OBS works fine, I, I, I don't know. I've never used XSplit, I've only used OBS. So I don't know how good that is. You got Thunderbolt 3 with a Type-C connector. Now here's one thing that really annoyed me. Is that, okay, it has G-Sync. It has G-Sync built into the screen. That's great. I'm all for that. Makes it a nice all-in-one package. Let me tell you a secret. Most of you do not have G-Sync right now. When you are playing games, the only way your tearing is this bad is if you're doing something retarded, like trying to game on a Matrox card, or a toaster, or if you jammed a glass cup into your graphic card slot and tried gaming on that. No game plays this poorly unless your computer can't handle it. G-Sync does not make this big of a difference. The same thing goes for stuttering. This never happens unless there is something seriously wrong with your card. Has your graphics card have a stroke today? No? Then this doesn't happen! Ever! Again, no game lags this badly unless you've maxed out your CPU or you have a RAM bottleneck. Or something. This never happens. Now, or this never happens because you don't have G-Sync. Whether it's laptop, desktop, or otherwise. This is a blatant lie. Okay, and then that's it. So, how much does this thing cost? Now that I've done ripping its demonstrations, because this is... No. <laughs> Alright, well, I found one on Newegg. And this is... I need to bring up my thing again. This is an Asus... ROG uh, I lost the model number not this thing up here is this actually the right one I'm legitimately starting to wonder yeah this looks like the right one alright is that the VY yeah it is the G yeah it is okay this is it it's the G752VY. It was the same one I was looking at. They put so much uh, BS up there. 
but anyway. We're going to say 2.6 gigahertz quad core CPU. It's got 32 gigs of RAM again. Way overkill. NVIDIA GTX 980M. And this one is at $2,600. So $100 less, and it beats the MacBook Pro and everything except CPU. And even then, it's still going to beat the MacBook Pro. Yeah, it's still it's going to match the MacBook Pro basically because it's sixth it's sixth gen. That's an important thing to note here. So let's move on to Alienware because I seem to be the only one in all of existence to defend Alienware. Now, granted, this laptop is absurdly out of date. The Alienware 18, and the only reason I'm going to continue this, their highest end, is because we're talking all in one package. No freaking side tumor to, to boost it, just the laptop and only the laptop. Because Alienware does have a better solution than this, it's the Alienware 17, but the only reason it's better is because it has a graphics amplifier you can plug into it. The same thing goes with the Razer one. The Razer does have a graphics amplifier type thing. You can plug into it and get better GPU performance. I don't care. We're talking about just the laptop. No, not having to hook it up to life support or anything of the sort. So, there's a few reasons why I say this is the best one. First off, all in one. There's no external tumor to have attached to it. Second is the fact that this supports two graphic card, graphics cards. Third, this is a lot easier to repair. To kind of show show what I'm talking about, let's take a look at the, what it looks like with the bottom panel off. You take the bottom panel off, you can see you got three fans here, you've got two, two of your RAM sticks there, the battery would go right here, this little cavity here. Not a very big battery, but still more than enough. That's where your CD-ROM would go right next to it, and then over here this little cavity is where you put three hard drives. Your fourth one can also go where the CD-ROM drive is. So, where's all the components? Well, you remove, th like, eight screws here, take off the palm rest, and on the underside is where the rest of the components are. You have two more RAM slots, you have your CPU here, and you have your two graphic cards here. And they're MXM. In fact, all of the computers I've been talking about, with the exception of the Razer laptop and the MacBook Pro, use MXM graphic cards and have swappable CPUs. That means if you're brave enough or know enough about uh, repairing computers, you can upgrade components to a certain extent. You can grow into the laptop. So even when the graphic card dies, that's not the end of the laptop like it would be with the MacBook Pro or the Razer. So now that I've gone through over all that, how close can we get to the power? Well, fortunately we got one right here that's conveniently enough at the same price point as the MacBook Pro. So let's copy those specs. We've got a fourth generation Core i7 processor, unfortunately. They only put down what it can be overclocked to. I do not care about what it can be overclocked to. I care about what the specs are. So, Arc Intel, tell me what I want to know. Base clock speed 2.9. All right, Alienware. Alienware 18 comes with a 2.9 gigahertz quad core fourth gen. Now for the sake of argument, on paper, this processor is faster. I'm gonna call it a dead even split because they're basically the same architecture, but Broadwell's a, just a touch bit faster. So you can argue that's basically the same. The only real difference is that um, the MacBook Pro one on the lower end graphic card is going to be faster by a noticeable amount, but you don't care. You're going to be using that, that, integrate, that uh, dedicated GPU. This particular configuration comes with 16 gigs of RAM. That is nice and convenient. 
for our comparison. And then we have two GTX 970M graphic cards. And this is at $2,600. Or no, I'm sorry, it's at $2,700. I'm getting ahead of myself. So this, this is pretty much at the same price point. It's definitely bigger though, so don't get ahead of yourself there. It's definitely bigger than the MacBook Pro, and it beats it performance in every way, shape, and form. In fact, really when it comes to graphics, because this guy only has a 1080p display, and the MacBook Pro has, what, three times as many pixels to push because of that retina display? Graphics performance-wise, you are talking dangerously close to 600% better. And that's not even arguable. Now, you might get a little bit more tearing and a little bit more stuttering to a slight amount, very slight, because that's just what happens when you SLI cards. You get a little bit of what's called micro stutter. And that just means it might skip a frame here and there. But if you're just talking raw performance, this is the best way to go. Until you get to this one. There is one laptop that is more of a monster than the Alienware 18. And that's the MSI Titan. This, after doing all my research, could quite easily be my new favorite laptop. And I might want to get one of these down the road. But I, I, I want to check on the weight first. So this thing, it definitely doesn't look traditional. It's definitely chunkier. It's even chunkier than the, eight, than the Alienware 18. And that thing was a monster. But that keyboard is a full-sized keyboard. It's full depth because it's mechanical. If you don't know what a mechanical keyboard is, it means that instead of a little dome hitting a sensor and being virtually silent, there's a mechanical switch in it, and it's what sounds like this. I use a mechanical keyboard here, as you just heard. And as you've been hearing me as I've been typing out all of these. Now there's no numerical pad. The, the numerical pad is built into that trackpad there. Let me try and get a better picture. That numerical pad is actually the trackpad. So with the push of a button, that won't work now. Thank you, new egg. That trackpad becomes the numerical touchpad, and that's just touch-based. So that if you're if you're possibly going to be doing it, doing any sort of number crunching, this is not the kind of laptop to do it with, because you're going to be going for the top row keys anyway. But that is a massive trackpad. Very nice. Possibly could replace a mouse if you're used to it. But now the question comes: what's in this giant space up here? Well, Thanks to my buddies over here at Hexus, and by buddies I just mean I ran to them while I was doing a Google search for teardown pictures, they fortunately did me the favor, oh these had much better pictures, I should have just went with these right off the bat for those, uh, for those keyboards. So as you can see it's backlit, but it's red only. That's one downside. If you want a showboat laptop, definitely go with the Alienware. But if you want functionality, this is definitely the guy to go with. Unless you have to do number crunching, then that uh, might not. You pop open that top cover there, and you will find a lot, of, pretty much all your storage. There's your CD-ROM drive. You have, count them, one, two, three, four, four M2 slots for SSDs. That means you could have up to four terabytes of RAM. Or I mean, four terabytes, not not of RAM. Four terabytes of solid state storage, not including the the SSD storage you could have on the hard drive here as well. And you have two of your four slots. Now, where's the rest of the computer? Well, of course, just like with the Alienware, it's underneath. You see, there's a lot more cooling action going on here than there is in the Alienware, and for good reason. 
you've got two, uh, once again, two MXM slots. Both of them can take up to a full size GTX 980. Not a 980M, but a 980. It's got the cooling and the power to handle that. You got what? One, two, three, four heat pipes coming off here. Three of them going to the side vent, one of them going to the top vent. The CPU in the middle there, two heat pipes, one going to each of the top vents. So this thing can pump out a ton of heat. And on top of that, you do notice there is all this wasted space here. That's where your batter that's where your tiny little battery and all the space for that mechanical keyboard goes. Basically, this thing has no battery life. It's like an hour, if that. Even less if you put in full-size GTX cards. So, now the challenge is to get the price low enough to actually make it compete to actually make it compete with the MacBook Pro. Fortunately, I've already done that. Oh no, it's video memory. I want to keep that there. So, do 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 do. After saying I already did that, and I messed it up. So, we've got, with the MSI Titan, which I had caps lock on for a rip, MSI Titan 2.7 gigahertz quad core 6th, 6th gen, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and dual. Dual GTX 970M. And that's... I'm just going to round up. It's 2680, but I'm going to round up to 2700 just for argument's sake. So that brings our total to... Let me put this back to a darker background. Bring up the whole screen there. There we go. So the MacBook Pro 2.8 gigahertz quad core fifth generation, 16 gigs of RAM, and an M 370X 2700. Razor Raid Pro is basically on par with it at $200 less. Main gear smokes it at $2750, but $50 more expensive. Falcon Northwest, and Falcon Northwest definitely, without a doubt, takes the CPU crown here. At tw with a full size processor that I didn't expect. Definitely more than enough RAM. GTX 970M at 2780. The Asus ROG, you know, it's respectable. It's there. Definitely the cheapest for the buck at 2600. The Alienware, you definitely get the power for the for the dollar. And especially you get the power where it counts at that graphics card area with the SLI cards at 2700 and it's definitely, definitely a nice showboat computer. But really, what ends up being the best gaming laptop hands down is the MSI Titan. I mean, without a doubt, the mechanical keyboard, you're not sacrificing anything there. Rubber domes is just the worst feeling if you're going to do like a three-hour session. It, it's just, it gets annoying, especially when pinpoint accuracy matters. But you've definitely got more than enough CPU performance. you got 2.7 gigahertz quad core, 16 gigs of RAM, and again, you've got the dual SLI graphic cards in there. Now, it's not a showboat laptop. You'll catch some eyes, but it's not going to be nearly as showboaty as the Alienware. So you just kind of got to balance it out. Are you really getting it to showboat at, at any LAN parties, or are you getting it to have absolute raw performance. And that's going to be the difference between the MSI and the Alienware. But on the other hand, if you're looking for something that you want really good performance, way above average, but you're also going to be doing like CPU-based rendering, you know that Falcon Northwest unit? That's not one to scoff at either. But the bottom line here, and the point that I really wanted to make, is that no matter what you're doing, 
there is a better option than the MacBook Pro. Without a doubt. The only thing the MacBook Pro has on any of these laptops is that it's lighter. And even then, the Razer Blade Pro is a better laptop than the MacBook Pro. That's what I really wanted to get across here. And I think I've done that successfully. Now, we still got a little bit of time. I got a few last things to, to talk about, but we're basically done with the ripping on the MacBook Pro with actual real gaming laptops. We're going to move on to a few other oddball products I've seen pop up, and then we'll call it a day. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back, Eagle Eyes on Tech. I am Eagle Falcon. Let's finish this up. So I talked about this on the CES episode because these came out at the CES. But the... Alright, so we got the Inspiron 11 from Dell. The gold standard for... The, the gold standard for mediocrity. And really what this shows to me between... The HP Stream and the Inspiron 11 3000 is that netbooks are coming back. They are definitely coming back. Because, I mean, just look at this guy. We've got an Intel Celeron low-powered processor, but still, you know, respectable 2.16 GHz. You know, we've got Windows 10 Home in there. You know, respectable. 2 gigs of RAM, a little under. Not be able to do a whole lot with that. You definitely want to try and get that up to four. I don't know how easy or hard that's going to be. You've only got a 32 gig hard drive in there. Not a whole lot to play with, but it's still usable in some respects. Standard integrated HD graphics, 11 inch, nine hours of battery life, and blah 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 blah. Nothing else that's that's mat that's matter. Integrated webcam up to 720p. You know, not bad. Full-size, spill-resistant keyboard. So basically it's full-size. Ignore that part about it being spill-resistant. Nothing is spill-resistant. Don't spill anything on them, period, ever. Built-in wireless, blah, 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 blah. All for 200 bucks. So what's the point of noticing this? It's the fact that there's a cheap option again. Before, if you wanted to get on the cheap, you had to get something used or refurbished or off-lease or anything along those lines. That was the only way to get something cheap. Now there are new options that, while they not be, might not be the best laptop, a smart buyer might not go for them, you can still just go and, hey, look, let me go get a $200 generic computer for my son or daughter to use while they're in high school. Something where they've actually got a keyboard and can actually type in notes instead of infuriatingly trying to use an on-screen keyboard with a used iPad or anything like that. And it's nice to see those sort of options come back because when push comes to shove, as much as pe as tablet users want to say, oh, I can do everything with my tablet, go type an essay on your tablet. Then we'll talk. And here's the thing. You are going to be tapping out very quickly. In more ways than one, as a matter of fact. That's that. Moving on. I want to bring up, going back to Alienware, this little guy. For the longest time when I was running reforged computers, one of the things I always tried to do was see how close I want to try and build a small form factor computer that's about the same size as the Xbox, about the same power as the Xbox, and as close to the same price as I could. Well, with the dawn of the Steam Box, which was the original reason why I started that, Alienware basically did it with the Alpha. And the reason I wanted to point it out is because of the specs. I mean, granted, we're old here with a fourth generation Intel Core i3. Now, granted, that's a dual core Core i3. And you're going to go, oh, but the Xbox and PS4, and PS whatever, 4? Yeah, PS4. 
and the PS4 all have octa-core processors. <laughs> Let's inject reality back into the situation. Those octa-core processors are tablet processors that clock in at 1.3 gigahertz each. They have as much process. They actually have less processing power than my cell phone, which also has a quad core, which also has a quad core tablet based processor in it. This is not a tablet based processor. This is a real x86 desktop processor at 3.2 gigahertz per core, four threads. This benchmark wise smokes the Xbox and the PS4 on the CPU side. But, as I've said a thousand times, the GPU doesn't, or the CPU doesn't matter. Most games, their bottleneck is the GPU. So, what GPU do, does, the alpha, does the alpha have? Well, that's actually a fascinating mystery. Because you look it up, and it says an NVIDIA GeForce GTX GPU with 2 gigabytes of GDDR5. And it says that across the board. Hmm, that's interesting. That doesn't tell me ab anything at all. Well, let's take it apart. Well, you take it apart, here's what you find. You find two heat sinks. And one of them is not on an MXM slot, that's just an optical illusion. So both of them are soldered onto the board. You take a look at the underside and you have nothing. Take a look at the top side, here's what it looks on the inside. You literally just have two squirrel, squirrel cage fans, and one of them's a GPU, the other one's a CPU. That's it. RIP. So no information there. In fact, comparing it here, you still have no information. In fact, you can clearly tell here the CPU is there and the GPU is here. So the GPU has to be efficient. So, you take a look at it and it's basically a GTX 570Ti-M. So, that brings up the next question. What GPU is in the Xbox One? The Xbox One has, an, has a custom AMD APU, which is paired with a Radeon 700 series GPU. Now, notes I've heard compare this to a 7, 7790. So, you go GPU boss. And I wish I could find the article that said it compared it to a to a um, to a seventy seven ninety. And I'll do more research later on for next week and try to compare it. So this is a G a GTX seven fifty Ti. Compare the two. And they've actually, it's too close to call. In fact, if you look at a few things, Passmark, the 750Ti is faster. 3D Vantage, it's faster. 3D Mark, the 7790 smokes the 750Ti. Dead even there, dead even there. And the 750 is a smidgen faster there at Passmark. So, what does it mean? They're basically on par. When push comes to shove, that's that's the end story. It's really close. So it's safe to say that this computer basically is as fast as an Xbox One. And the reason I'm going to compare it to the Xbox One and not the PS4 is because games are going to look at the Xbox One, which is the slower of the two consoles, as the benchmark as the benchmark to base their games. So a game that's going to a game's going to perform basically the same on an Xbox One as it is on the PS4. The only difference is going to be that any games that are PS4 exclusive are going to perform better on the PS4 because they're going to take advantage of that extra hardware. I know I'm talking really fast 
But basically, it's all irrelevant. So, we've got this one. The Alienware Alpha is $400. Did you ever think you'd ever see the day where you could get a gaming PC for $400? I didn't. I didn't think I'd ever see that day. But there it is. A decent, a very respectable gaming PC. Granted, not the best in the world. It's definitely not going to be as big as your super rigs that other people are going to build. But it's definitely going to keep up there. And you're going to compare that to the Xbox One price, which probably has gone down a bit. And the Xbox One, we'll compare it at GameStop real quick. Is screw you. I said real quick. This is not real quick. You have failed me. Xbox One Elite con console. I don't care. That's a bundle. Oh my god. All right, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to say for right now, you can get a new Xbox One for $350. I think. <laughs> That's such a mess. Okay, maybe there's something out. I think I saw some prices when I was in, on the Google page. Okay, Best Buy and Walmart say 400 bucks. So yeah, for the same price as an Xbox One, you can get a gaming PC as well. And then you can also get the Steam Machine, which is the same thing as the Xbox One. For, for, I mean, the Alpha, except it runs SteamOS and not Windows 10. That's the difference. This guy runs SteamOS. This guy is this guy runs Windows 10. This is actually a gaming PC, basically, but it has a few software tweaks to make it better for to make it better for PC gaming. The Steam Machine, if I remember right, does also come with the controller. I think I lied. Okay, whatever. Alright, so you might have to buy the controller, so we'll say $450. Still, did you ever think that PC game would ever get even close to the kind of budget that um, console gamers ever saw? That's really just showing how, how much closer and closer we're we're getting to God, I don't I don't know what it means in the end. I thought I had a thought and then I didn't. Now oh, well. I hate to leave on that bundle, but that's pretty much all the time we've got. I mean basically, okay, here's what I was gonna say. That hurdle. The whole thing with PC gaming is that it's a huge price hurdle to jump. Your basic platform you used to start at over a grand. Like for a halfway decent gaming PC, it would almost always be twelve hundred dollars, and then it would just go up from there. On a laptop end, it was always like fifteen hundred dollars up to twenty five hundred dollars. Like we were talking about earlier, going through all those game, gaming computers. But here, you can get a respectable rig. Not the most powerful in the world, but it's definitely going to play whatever game you want in medium settings. No problem at all. For 400 bucks. Never did I ever think that would happen. Technology just keeps getting cheaper and cheaper. And we're just now get And just for the bare bones, you can actually get away with on a decent budget. And that's not even using the tricks that I know to do things like my super rig here that if you were to go out and on eBay right now for, you could pretty much go build your own rig like I've got here for god like 700 bucks and you'd have dual quad core processors a GTX 780 four SSDs an extra hard drive you know and and this thing 
even though it's eight years old, it kicks butt. It still does everything I'd ever wanted to do. And I'll talk more about that later on. In fact, we'll cover that next week on how to do something like that. For now, though, we are out of time. Please feel free to like and subscribe this one if you're on YouTube. If you're listening to this on the, on the podcast, feel, feel free to hit me an email at um, eaglefalcontech at gmail.com. That's it, and take care, everyone. Rest well.